Today we're going to go over structure and patterns. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. G'day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Hopefully everybody's had a chance to recharge over the weekend, relax, get out, get some exercise, review and, and prepare for the coming week. Today we're going to go over structure in a bit more detail. I received a lot of emails and questions. We, we, we've blown over structure a little bit, we've talked about it, we've gone into some detail about it, but today we're going to go a little bit more in depth because of a lot of the same questions happening. Um, I've talked about Peter Brandt, studying Peter Brandt, follow him on Twitter, get his books, uh, 21 weeks of real trading, prof professional commodity trader Peter Brandt, and his classical charts, charting patterns book with Peter Brandt, and Schaubacher's book, uh, Edwards and McGee is another one, but Schaubacher was the original technical analysis and stock markets book. Peter uh, has been a huge mentor and influence on my trading. He has affected me in a lot of ways, just in terms of my psychology, my approach to the markets, a lot of uh, my understanding. Like I studied, I've studied hundreds of courses. I've spent tons of money on books and seminars and learning, but everything went back to the basics and. Peter's the one who helped me really tie everything together, especially with understanding risk reward and asymmetry with classical charting patterns. You hear me talk about structure all the time at the beginning of our 50 pips a day simple system. Structure's the most important things because that's what allows us to understand the possibility of a move setting up or, or having set up and the ability to control our risk. So we talk about a one bar stop or a one ATR stop, but it's the geometric, the possibility of the geometric pattern that's evolving that allows us to form a trade thesis each day going to the screen knowing that potentially we may be looking for a buy setup or a sell setup in a, in a market that we might be looking for a sell setup in a market that's going up. We might be looking for a buy setup in a market that's going down because of what they've painted in the, geomet the geometry of how Asia is set up or pre perhaps from the Asia London session, sorry, the uh, US Asia session or maybe Asia London session heading into New York. So structure is the most, one of the most important things first before we even decide that we want to take a trade. That's, what's, that's what helps us start to construct our trade thesis. That's the most important thing. Now we could have a bigger picture structure that's evolving but we may have a structure that changes on that day inside of a bigger geometric pattern. You know, I got a couple of emails talking about hindsight trading. Everything is about eliminating the variables to analysis paralysis. This is what gets you to the steps in that 12 candle window to know that you're looking for a sell setup or a buy setup or nothing at all. So the hindsight is, is somebody saying, this is where you should buy, this is where you should sell. I'm, I'm trying to give you the tools to go to the screen each day to form a thesis. That thesis can change in two hours, but when you go to the screen, the market is already painting a pattern for us, or maybe they're inside of a, a bigger pattern and we just need to wait and leave that, that particular instrument with alert set or coming back later in the next session because we want to wait for that market to either get up towards the, the top of a range or move down lower or the bottom of the range or maybe it's just consolidating for six to eight hours before it moves lower or higher for a trade setup to happen. So I talked about looking at Asia and studying the, the Asian sessions from the US into Asia because you will see the same recurring patterns. So somebody said, I don't see these patterns. I looked through the same charts and I didn't see any of those. Well, I don't understand that. If you don't see them, buy those books and read those chapters on geometry because if you get peaks forming why would you go to the screen we have we have we might have the previous day's low just to give you an example we have horizontal line and just to reinforce and Peter's taught me this as well I don't like to trade I don't trade trend line breaks I look for horizontal pattern lines to be broken so we, we come to the screen and we might have three peaks formed in Asia. We have two possibilities. This market is going to go up or this market is going to go down. And this 
When I come to the screen and I see this, I'm thinking descending triangle. I have my anchor point low. I've got the possibility of a descending triangle happen, happening. So my thesis is that this market might be squeezing into the open of Europe or it might have already broken out in the end of Asia before it pulls back. So I'm thinking engulfment or pin hammer after maybe a one, two, three into the into the pullback or, we, or, or it might drop down and go sideways before we get a, an engulfment heading back down. But if this changes in that crossover and and breaks out or it goes just goes sideways well then my thesis changes so when we go to the screen we want to be looking did Asia make new highs did it go up and then start making new lows well then I'm thinking maybe we're gonna get a W formation for a breakout continuation okay the bigger picture gives us our high and our low now if Asia or the next day changes that if we if we break out and then the market starts auctioning back we have a high and we have maybe our low right there but if the market's working the low and starts to go higher now we've got our W formation for a possible now now we've got geometry here we've got a rectangle and we can we can hypothesize a measured move for that market to break through higher or lower so that market may fail at the high but you still bought low inside of that geometric pattern and in most cases that will be at least 25 pips because why? because most of these markets move from numbers to numbers with their highs and lows 25 pips is usually the minimum if I see a smaller range, a smaller Asian range than that and it's trading sideways we're inside of a bigger pattern so that market either has to start to expand its range and give me something down low for a buy or break out for a, for a buy continuation or vice versa. It has to break higher and reverse for a sell up high signal if we're inside of a bigger high and low. So we may have a market that's been going down as we saw on Friday and all of a sudden they pull it back even though the whole trend is down we've got a high and we've got a low and the market breaks out before Europe opens again there is our geometry we got a high and we have a low so now if the market continues to trend we can put a measured tool up to look at the, the measured distance as a potential profit target and in most cases so if it's numbers we can just basically do the math in our head if it's a 25 pip move it might be 50 pips from that point or if the market was a 50 pip box from high to low it could be 150 pips from the low to that overall profit target so I hope I hope that makes sense but these are the that's what creates the possibility now for us to form a thesis in terms of direction but also a measured distance for a profit target now that's not taking into consideration sorry about my mess now that's not taking into consideration a two or three day pattern that's forming as well because we saw this last week Friday made a peak and then Monday made a peak in Asia so just to come back this is Monday this is Friday okay geometry the market where my thesis is that if the market breaks this low now we have a measured distance we can put for that range and that's what's important so the market ended up breaking I, I can't remember if it was Monday or Tuesday it broke down but we were inside of a bigger geometric range and then on Tuesday Wednesday the market broke down and formed a new rectangle and it went up before selling down and doing a measured move again of this rectangle on the way down so that's why each week when they reverse the templates we could be in a two week up move but we want to be following these markets up to the top okay and we want to be following them down to the bottom because we're going to get at some point a breakout and that could be that could be a head and shoulders pattern or a uh, you know a double bottom it could be a, a 
Ascending triangles aren't that common off the bottom. Usually we're going to get some kind of double bottom formation or you know, a, a, th a three push pattern. But again, that, that's what allows us to get our geometry. And if it's over two or three days and the ADR is 100 pips, you're probably looking at a two or 300 pip move. So that's where you get the bigger moves is when they come off the low or the high in a reversal uh, out of geometry from a two or three day pattern. So hopefully that makes sense. We'll look at some examples on the screen. But that's what allows us to form a thesis for the possibility of a move in a certain direction. That also gives us the ability to control our risk. So peak formations. Right away in the, in, the, in the first part of the day when you go into London, you should be able to identify, is there any peak formations? There may not be. It may be just a consolidated sideways market inside of a bigger range. So then we're probably assuming that the market's going to be working off the highs and lows of that day until the U.S. session, at which point it may sell off high or buy low for the move towards the bigger uh, picture geometry. Are we inside of a rectangular box, a bigger rectangular box? That's what I was just referring to. Or are we in a possibility of a triangle? Are we up high for a, a descending triangle reversal, very common on, on the highs of our market markets? Or are we down low, in which in a lot of cases we'll see possibly a peak formation blow off can um, you know, a day where we blow off in reverse for a reset or a consolidation in a sideways market over a day or two for a big W rectangular reversal. Whenever we get consolidations, we tend to get big moves. They will come, big moves will come out of consolidations. And this can help us have a predetermined and measurable trade risk. And that's the most important thing. We want to have the ability to control our risk. So hopefully you got some value from that today, traders. We'll look at some examples on the charts just from the past week. Reinforce just each day, go to the screen, be able to identify the high and the low. What kind of pattern do we see? Are we in a trend? If, if your thesis is one of those boundaries is going to get broken or tested, we could be selling high or buying low. Or when a market has already broken out, we're looking for that measured distance to possibly complete. So therefore, our thesis is that we want to be trading with that underlying trend that's already in place. Stay disciplined, stay focused, get ready, it's going to be another big week, and may the markets go with you. Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. And just continuing our discussion on uh, structure, a lot of questions again just about um, bigger picture geometry and measured moves. A lot of the same sort of uh, similar questions from different people. And we're just going to go over that again and reinforce the most one of the, the the critical nature of structure is that it allows us to have a thesis and the possibility of a trade setting up or setting up a setup for us to participate in a move or it's already in progress and we want to obviously trade in the direction of the trend so monday looking at the pound yen we're looking at we have friday's high and we come to the screen asia has traded we have a low of the day and we have a high of the day, but we're inside of Friday's high. And Friday's low. <clears throat> now people ask, well, why don't you draw a trend line up like that? I don't trade diagonals. I'm looking for horizontals. So we can put a line at the high and a, and a line at the low. But we can also have a thesis that we're up high. It's Friday, Monday, the market has failed to go higher after it traded higher and it's pulled back, but our horizontal trend line is still intact. So initially we would have a horizontal line up top and a horizontal line on the bottom because we're inside of a box, but the market has pulled off of that high and not taken out the low before going into consolidation. And as we move sideways and we head into the Europe Open, we have also now made a new high, lower high inside of that range. Now, what's important about this is we talk about patterns within patterns. A break of this smaller pattern may be the initial move that gets the trade going outside of the bigger pattern. So as this market starts to head into the Europe Open, we get a break of the smaller pattern. We're at numbers. We're at round numbers, so we talk about timings, structure, 
high of the day, low of the day. We're near the low of the day, but we have a peak formation in place. Peak formation. Which way did the market move? It moved up and came down. That's a selling setup. Unless they break through this high, we're inside of a previous peak formation. And now we have a rectangle forming at the bottom of the day after a peak formation is in place. We move sideways into the London Open. We're below the round numbers. Okay, and we also have a new peak formation in place. So we have one push, two push, and on a smaller level, one, two, three pushes and a peak formation breakout. Now we have our pullback starting. Traders that chase the move short at the end of the second hour, they're, they're selling at the bottom of the day. And we talk about we want to sell high or buy low. Now the thesis for them might be, well, I'm selling high in the uh, London session but you're actually selling the low of what's been painted so far of the low and the high of the London session. The market pulls back before at the end of our 12 candle window breaking out, we have our engulfment and it's accompanied by a small little pin hammer and a breakout. So we have a breakout at the high. Friday was the high of the week. Monday gave us a peak formation inside of that peak formation. We now have a possible descending triangle. We can project any horizontal low or high across. We have now an upper possible geometric range that we can take our measuring tool. So for people that have asked, I've just taken my Fibonacci tool and changed it to 100 and 200 uh, and 300 percent expansions of the range. So we project this downwards for our short trade as a first initial measured measuring tool for profit taking. Now that can evolve as the trade plays out. So the market pulls back. It hasn't hit our first expansion yet, but we've also broken through another 50 pip boundary. So this market has moved over 50 pips and now is pulling back. We say we have a one, two, three down and a one, two, three up in our seven o'clock stop on hour just prior to heading into the U.S. session 12 candle window. So some traders may have taken their 50 pips. Other traders may have been holding on or looking to trade in line with the U.S. session. So we're already in a move that's going down. We have a measured distance. doesn't mean that it has to go there. But if you're, if you're already out of the market or you've taken profit or you've taken uh, one half off or you're coming to the screen flat and you want to looking for the a, an opportunity to resume the trend if because now here we are people are looking for the reversal but what's happened is we've 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 got just a peak formation low on a one two three pullback we've gone into our 12 candle session with a one two three sideways and now one push two push three pushes back up inside of that uh, 50 pip box at numbers before we get our reversal now people say well it's not a complete engulfment when you have our M formation and you're near the end of the 12 candle window and they've given you a pin hammer and then they actually have taken out the low, traders can position themselves in the market at close or on the break of that candle because after it breaks that low, that is, that's it. The pattern is, is complete. Now also that double top formation is a pattern. It's a smaller pattern inside of an existing trade on our way potentially to fulfilling that measured move. And as we go through, we've done one full expansion, not quite two. Some traders may exit the trade on a 50 pip move again or a 100 pip move. Uh, again, round numbers. Uh, these are all decisions you can make. Obviously, going to the screen before you may have already taken 50 and taken 50 on the second one or, or held on for more but again identifying the peak formation which way the market moved up and down that's a peak formation so the thesis would be that they're going to be selling today unless that trade thesis gets broken prior to the next opportunity we have our measured distance the high and the low even if we want to just call this a rectangle inside of a peak formation we would still take that high and that low for our measured distance for a profit target. 
we head into the next day. Asia goes in the first three-hour window. We get our high and our low. So just to clarify, we're using the information now that the market gives us to form our thesis for the London session. People are saying, well, yeah, but that's hindsight. You can still trade Asia. Look, one push, two push, one, two, three into the high at round numbers, sideways on top of the round numbers after the stop hunt into the U.S. session. And then the micro double top, that's the type one, a 50 pip move and an M formation into the open of the next session. They, they sell off for 50 pips before pulling it back. So we're in an existing downtrend. In Asia, they now have given us a peak formation, but they've also given us a low and a high. Okay, that's geometry. Now, we broke out of a, a previous range. A previous range is low. That was the, the low from that U.S. session, the last low before the leg up to the high. So if we go back there now, we can even put our measuring tool on. We'll just bring this a little closer. We can bring our measuring tool on that London transition U.S. low. We'll get rid of this one just for now. But we can take this this high and this low now and project it down one full expansion. And then we get into our next day. So again, we talk about this market gave us an existing direction to have a thesis and it broke through that high and low. I'll just open this up again. It broke through that high and low. So now even this for on the day itself, we take our low and our high, and we project that down for a measured move. And we'll just zoom in a bit here. And again, same thing. This is our this is our geometric shape on the day inside of a pre a pre existing bias. So we're using that measuring tool to target more than fifty pips, or we broke out of that range, and that range was high of thirty eight twenty, and a low of 137.40. So we're looking at an 80 pip range. So instead of going for 50, we might be targeting 80. So traders get into the trade at uh, say 37.08 on a on the hammer or the engulfment somewhere around there. 30. We'll just say 3700. Instead of going to the 50, they might be targeting beyond the 50 for the 80. So the the market may be going uh, to uh, 80 at the next level. Which should, this trade moved down to the low of 36.22. So again, that was about an 80 pip move um, from entry to exit. So just again, just using the geometry, the bigger picture geometry. So hopefully, we'll just we'll zoom out on this again and just paint this picture. I want everybody to be able to understand this structure right here. That's our geometry from the high to the low. This big box, that's our box. If the market breaks through there, that's our measuring distance. So hopefully that, that makes sense. So we can do that for any session. So we go to the next London US session. Okay, we've got our high of London. Project that across. We've got our low. We project that across. Okay, now there's our high and our low of our geometry. Now, people have asked, well, why don't you draw the high and the low inside? You can, except that now you're tightening up the range, and that's okay, but we want to be still looking at the bigger picture so you can see on this particular next day, we want to make sure we're staying out of the garbage that's inside. So we, we want to see that market either give us something to sell high or to buy low, and because our thesis is that this direction is still down, we want to be selling high. And into the U.S. session again in our 12 candle window, we want to be we want to be using that as our. We can see that the market pushed up into the high of those two peak formation highs. 
we have a smaller interday low now that's also formed. And you see how the market respected this. So now we have geometry again. So we have, we have our low, but now we have geometry because this, when it's broken, that horizontal line, okay, we can project that distance down if the market breaks out, which it does as we head into the beginning of the next session. Oops. So now, even with that geometry, we can project that geomet geometrical expansion down as well. Every time we get a geometrical expansion, we can project that as well as the larger one. So we have a thesis in line for the larger pattern, and we have a thesis in mind for this particular trade. So it breaks out in Asia, continues its move down, and what does it do? One push up, two pushes up three pushes up into the trend before dropping down with a open drive candle and also same pattern we just saw a couple days earlier in the US session a micro double top which is a descending triangle and now of course we have geometry again for a measured move so our thesis now our bias is looking for a sell setup in a down market we want to sell high Traders are, are, they sold this, okay, okay, if you sold the break in Europe, you'd have to go to break even at the break of that low, or take money off. It reverses right away, okay, let's just clear this chart, start again, because what do we have now? We have a high, right, and we have a low. We have a lower high from the Europe Open, and now we have geometry again. And we have a way to measure for potentially more than 50 pips. So we get a, another double top formation that ends the move. The pattern we just saw in Asia, micro double top, outside of our 12 candle window, but Again, the market, if it gives you the opportunity with a strong moving market, and pattern was complete. So if you came to the screen in the U.S. session, you'd want to be trading in the direction of the trend. Let's cover this last day because a great example again, just to, again to, we're talking about coming to the screen after the Asian session has traded, so towards the end of the Asian session. So the market is giving us information already about geometry. We have a high. We had a low that the market broke in Asia. Market broke down. Give us another sell-off at the open of Asia before pulling back on a 1-2-3 and then going down 1-2-3 and breaking back out. So now we've got a reverse head and shoulders. So we have a reverse head and shoulders. So somebody said to me the other day, that's, that's hindsight. No, no, this is already here. So if we have a reverse head and shoulders, the neckline, just, just the measuring tool on the neckline, we're thinking longs, but the measuring tool on the neckline gets hit for one expansion on the, on the Europe open. And what do they do? One, two, three, engulfment at the London open. So the point is this, we have geometry, we have a high in place. Now we have a low, but the peak formations were on the bottom Friday morning. They're on the bottom. So two things, we, have, we now have bigger geometry. So there's our high, there's our low, there's our box, there's our high and our low. The measured expansion of this, just zoom this in a bit, slide this over. The measured expansion of this box is where we went to. Now, the break of that high in the London Open, obviously the full expansion, one full expansion was almost the same distance as the full expansion of this box. Now in a normal situation, if that was a strongly moving market, it would have broke through and continued to the third, the, the second full expansion of this, this range. But we already 
had completed the ADR. But again, reinforcing, what we're looking for is the geometry each day, the structure. The peak formation was on the bottom. Do you remember where it was on Monday? It was on the top. We have a head and shoulders reversal. We have a high. We have a low. If that gets broken and the market is continuing to go in that direction, we're looking at a possible measured move. So instead of going for 50, we could be going for 100. We have a one bar stop in the 12 candle window. It's an engulfment after a one, two, three against the trend. And we have structure in place. Now you'll also notice that that measured distance was also the highs of the London session from the previous day before. So hopefully you got some value from that today, traders. Work with structure. Look for structure first off. That can help us form our thesis for the day or for the session. And it allows us to also look for possible measured distances for asymmetrical risk reward and managing our risk and having a one bar stop. Because if we have a one bar stop and we're, we're doing what we've just shown here, if we're wrong, we could be wrong in the reversal sense where the market could be flipping and going all the way back down to the other side of the range. And so now what you've done is possibly sold high or sorry, bought, bought high or sold low in a bigger geometrical box that could continue to go against you and blow your uh, loss out even bigger. So stay disciplined traders, study structure. If you need uh, to read more or study more, look at Peter Brandt's work. This, we're going to see these same patterns this week just in different variations, but look for the highs and lows, paint a bigger picture, look for, for measured geometrical patterns. Stay safe and may the markets go with you. Hi traders, it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburketrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.